Okay, hello everyone. This is the fifth out of eight uh, character primer videos that I'm making for Yadagarasu version 4.3. The next one I'm going to do for you guys is Juzumaru. Uh, Juzumaru makes Bruce Lee noises, which is part of what makes him fun. But let me go ahead and go into what makes him also unique as a character. Round one, fight. fight. Okay. So beginning with his special moves, he has what some fighting gamers uh, call a Rekka in shorthand. But when you input quarter circle forward punch or a fireball motion, he sticks his hand out. But what you need to know is that you can do three of these in succession. If the first one hits and you do them quickly, they'll automatically combo. It's also interesting to note that the light version doesn't really go anywhere, but the fierce version actually has some decent forward movement on it, so you can actually poke from about half screen with it. Like, like so. Remember that the light version doesn't go anywhere. The EX version goes about as far as the fierce one, but the EX version also allows you to get five Rekkas instead of three. Also keep in mind if you do quarter circle forward and both punches to start the EX Rekka, you don't have to press both punches on the Rekkas after that. You can just input quarter circle forward any punch. And also you can go into the second and third and beyond Rekkas, whether it hits or is blocked or it whiffs. Now, one thing that you do need to know is that every version of every Rekka is bad on block and is punishable. If you just do one Rekka and they block this, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this is on block here. If you just do one light Rekka and they block this, notice how much earlier the defender jumped. That's how much frame advantage they have. They're probably gonna be able to punish this if you just stop. Fierce Rekka, same deal. What about second Rekka? Well, same deal. Second Rekka on Fierce, same deal. What about the third Rekka? Well, three. Wait. Terrible on block. Terrible on block. And it's a similar case with the EX Rekka, but there's just one little exception. If you just do EX Rekka, the first one, that's not terribly bad on block. You still have some frame disadvantage. It looks like it's minus two or maybe minus three. So it's unlikely that everyone will be able to punish this. But um, the fact is, if you go to, if you do any Rekka except just the first EX version, you're liable to be punished. Now this actually creates an interesting mix-up, okay? And this is something that Fei Long can do, Iori can do, Kyo can do in some King of Fighters, Street Fighter games. This is a somewhat um, basic mix-up that has been around for a little while. So let's say your opponent is going to attempt to punish the first Rekka actually by hitting a button. What you could do is just go into the second Rekka, and if you time it right, and they attempted to hit a button or stop guarding, then that second Rekka will catch. Right now it's catching the dummy because he's trying to jump. But the idea is if you time these Rekkas properly, you can make someone feel like they have to keep blocking and like they shouldn't try to punish these Rekkas. But just keep in mind that every Rekka you do is technically punishable, except for just the first one on the EX version. All the other ones are terrible, so it's up to you to try and make your opponent fear trying to punish it by doing these Rekkas properly to get those stray hits. Um, let's see, so that's his quarter circle forward punch. He's also got, using a dragon punch motion, hit a punch button, and he sort of thrusts his shoulder forward like that. Okay, the light punch version doesn't really go very far. It can be used at close range for some combos. Okay, the fierce punch version does double the damage. And it also launches the opponent into the air, and it reaches a little bit further. Okay, um, now when you do the hard punch version, you can actually hold the hard punch down and get a fake. So you can do some interesting tricks with that. Remember, you can only fake the hard punch version though. Okay, um, the EX version hits twice and launches the opponent, can combo from a few things. Um, also, one interesting thing to note about it, let's record that again, there we go, is that the first 
couple of frames of startup of the EX shoulder actually has super armor. So if your opponent is trying to attack you, say on wake up, you know what, let's, uh, let's record it differently here. Let's do this in the corner, here we go. Oh, bad recording. One more time. There we go. There we go, DP punch. One more time. There we go. If someone is trying to attack you with like say a meaty attack on wake up, you can use the EX version of Dragon Punch and Punches to take the damage and take that super armor counter and you might be able to go through their attack. But keep in mind, it's not throw invincible, but it does have armor on both the high, the high and low part of the body for a certain amount of time. It's, it's, it's very, very brief. Um, but you can possibly go through some meaty attacks with the EX version of the shoulder mm. attack. Um, and, just like with the Rekkas, all three versions of this are pretty bad on block. Oh, not skill 25, but guard. Actually, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll amend that. They all have frame disadvantage. But the light and the fierce ones aren't too bad on block. EX1 might be punishable, but this is still nowhere near as bad as Rekka's, but they do still have frame disadvantage. Not terrible on block, but still frame disadvantage. Um, using that dragon punch motion and a kick yields his third special move. This is the light one, and this is the fierce one. These are all terrible. Um, to just throw out there, you are going to be massively punishable. Think of them like an uppercut. The light one does 7,000. The fierce one does only a little bit more damage, but a couple of extra hits. And the EX version, just a little bit more damage as well. Um, this is his good wake-up move, okay? If someone knocks you down, um, all three versions of this special are invincible to throws, and the hard and EX versions have complete invincibility, high and low and throw. So you can use this on wake up to try and discourage your opponent from rushing you down. Keep in mind the light version is only throw invincible though. Shaboom. Alright, now we need to get into his fourth special move. It's quarter circle back punch, and it's the most complicated special move he has because there are follow ups to this. You might notice, hey, that quarter circle back punch looks a lot like the, you know, the shoulder charge. And basically, it kind of does. And it, that's intentionally, that's intentional so that you can do tricks with this. When you input quarter circle back punch, it doesn't matter which button you press, but if you press nothing after that, he just automatically does nothing and there's a fake. So you could just say close fierce, quarter circle back punch, and nothing happens if you don't press anything else. Okay? Now, if during a quarter circle back punch, you press light punch, then he does his little shoulder charge which is basically exactly the same as if you inputted a dragon punch motion and press light punch. These are functionally identical. Okay, now if you press quarter circle back punch and you press hard punch, he does the shoulder charge as well, but this will launch. One thing that's very important to note here is, let's say you tried close fierce into the hard shoulder with the dragon punch motion, that won't combo because that shoulder has too much startup on it. However, you can press quarter circle back hard punch, and then again, use the hard punch follow-up on this special, and you will get the launch, and that's how you can create some combos with that. This does launch on uh, this hard punch follow-up here. And you can do some combos from there. Now, if you press a uh, light kick during quarter circle back punch, he sweeps the leg. <laughs> he goes for your shin here. This is a low. They have to block this low. And um, this is frame disadvantage on block, but if it uh, makes contact, whether it hits or is blocked, you can input quarter circle forward punch when it makes contact, and you'll go for what looks like the third Rekka, and it'll be a knockdown on hit. Aye. 
Um, if you do go for the Rekka and that's blocked, that's going to be fully punishable. So you don't want to let that out too much unless you know that low is going to hit. So that's light punch, hard punch, and light kick and pressing nothing. Well, what happens if you press hard kick? That's when you do a flying dragon kick. It's awesome. This reaches the full length of the screen. There's pretty much no way for your opponent to avoid this, but this is going to be very, very punishable on block. You just want to make sure that you're not too predictable with this move, and this can give you some really, really nice surprise factor. Okay. It's, a, it's going to be useful depending upon how good your opponent is. Now, what if you do the EX version? Well, just like the EX shoulder, the EX version of quarter circle back punch gives super armor, but is not throw invincible. So you can use this on wake up as well if you wanted to go for, say, one of the follow-ups instead. Or if you just wanted to wake up with armor, but not do anything else. You could wake up with just this, and then go for something else instead of automatically going for a shoulder. Okay? If you press a light punch or a hard punch on the EX version of this, Either one will launch, and either one will do 6,000 damage. So Light Punch and Hard Punch become basically the same thing if you do the EX version. If you do the Light Kick, a little sweep the leg here, it's still a low. It does a little bit of extra damage, and it also gives additional hit advantage, and you can actually combo a Light Punch after that. If you really, really good. And that enables some interesting combos. Another thing you can do with it is you can just link his first super. And by link, what I mean is you're not canceling it, but you're letting the, the low kick completely finish, and you're supering as soon as possible once you've recovered from that hit, and that will be a combo that they can't stop. Also, if they do block this low, this one actually gives frame advantage, whereas the meterless one on block has frame disadvantage. What about the flying dragon kick? Extra damage, extra hits. Nice and easy. Um, if it does hit, no real combos are possible after that. But um, if, you, if you're gonna throw this out and you do the EX version, you're gonna do a little bit of extra damage. And you can get up to three hits if you're close enough. So his quarter circle back punch has a lot going for it. It's going to depend on your style, which moves you like to use and how much you wanna go for fakes and things like that both in the close range and in the mid range, you can do lots of interesting things with it. Now, he's got two supers. They're both kicks. One is forward, one is back. Quarters forward is this. It looks like his first Rekka, but what this super actually does is it starts up very fast and it moves forward very fast as well. It does some pretty nice chunky damage. It has full invincibility. Um, and uh, this also can go through projectiles in case you're fighting against Crow or Co. That is something that this can do. Um, there's another interesting property here that a few supers have, but both of Juzumaru's supers can do this. Let's say you hit someone out of the air with an air reset. You can actually go for his super one, even though they flip through the air and are invincible to most other attacks. Like, if I try to do like a, a normal here, like a fierce punch, notice it misses or I try to hit them out of the air again, nothing happens. But, you can go for a super here. Now also notice that the combo counter turns red. Um, most, uh, I would, I would say, a few characters can do this with some of their supers. But uh, when that combo counter turns red, what that means is it's possible for your opponent to parry this. It's possible for them to parry that, but if they don't parry that, then this is a true combo. Okay, so just to demonstrate, I will go ahead and parry this for you. Let's see here. Let's see. Let me see how I can do this here. Oh, I know how to do that. There we go. That'll be good. Hit me. Woo! So, it's something that you can use. Like, say you neutral jump. Say this happens. Oh, not that. Say you neutral jump and you catch someone jumping at you. You could go for super one 
to try to tack on some additional damage if you think they're not going to be able to parry that. Notice how much damage this does. You get all of that damage. As long as you time it low enough to get all three hits, that's some pretty excellent, you know, that's some pretty excellent damage just for doing a defensive neutral jump fierce once in a blue moon. So as long as you're not too predictable with it and they don't parry that, that's a very useful thing that that parry one can do. Uh, excuse me, that super one can do. His second super also has full invincibility and also can be used after an air reset. In fact, after you hit with Super 2, you can even reset into Super 1 if you have both bars. Ah, I missed it. Let's go ahead and just do it this way. Boom, boom, boom. So if you have both bars, you can combo Super 2 into Super 1. But just like with Super 1, you can combo that off of particular air resets. Um, and Super 2 does just a little bit more damage. So let's say you wanted to combo into a Super, like say like this. Super 2 is going to do a little bit more damage, but Super 1 is going to knock them far away. So pick whichever suits your style. In the corner though, Super 2 is almost always going to be better. Um, so that's his specials and his supers. Um, what normals does he have that's notable? Does he have any command normals or anything like that? And he has a couple of target combos, and by that I mean um, chains that are very, very easy to time. Um, if you look at his standing light punch, it kind of looks like he slaps the air. If this actually makes contact, you can just hit light punch again, and he'll slap twice. Both of these hits are cancelable, so you can just light punch into Rekka. The second Light Punch has a little bit more advantage, though. And you can just combo into the Rekkas if you just do Light Punch, Light Punch like this. It's also possible to link a Crouching Hard Punch afterwards, after the second one, if you're very good. And that enables some pretty nice damage for Bread and Butter. Aye! Okay. Now, in addition to Light Punch, Light Punch, also notice that he'll still do the second one even if you're whiffing over here. If you, you just hit that second light punch quickly enough. Um, but he also has light kick, light kick. Similar deal. You can do it on whiff, although I don't know why you would want to. He hits you twice on light kick, light kick, and it actually launches you. And you might say, well, are there any combos possible there? And the answer is, eh, not really. The only thing you can really do after the light kick chain is either super. Uh, I haven't found anything else that you can do. I could be wrong about that. Please feel free to correct me if I'm missing something. The only thing I've found you can do after Light Kick, Light Kick is a super. It's also interesting to note the very first Light Kick, this one, it looks like it hits low, but it doesn't actually hit low. I'll just go ahead and demonstrate that I can block that just by holding back. So since it's not a low, I mean its use is kind of eh. So, um, we'll have to see. Also, you can mix between them. You can press light punch, light kick, light punch, light kick, light punch, light kick, and you can just sort of go between them like this. And if you do actually land three of these, you can still combo into the EX Rekka. Oops. Aye! Okay. Um, his Crouching Fierce Punch is going to be his workhorse normal. This is the normal you need to use, and you need to use it a lot. This is going to be an excellent counter poke in the Putsy game. It's cancelable, so you can pretty much always land Fierce Rekka, even at the very, very tip of this. And, even better, you can actually link Super 1 after this, like so. If you just do a Super 1 immediately after this recovers, if it hits, you can actually combo that Super 1 and get all that nice damage. Juicy. Alright, so you can even do a double link like this. Oh, wait. Eh, eh, eh. Eh, eh, eh. Go! And that will still work at the very tip range. Um, it, it gives him some very interesting confirms that he can do. Um, also, he does have a close normal, close hard punch right here. Um, this is going to be a good normal to go for if you say land a jump in uh, for good damage. Has, uh, it starts up relatively quickly, and you're going to be able to use it after Universal Overhead after certain things. Um, I also want to make a comment about his normal throw. His normal throw is a hold, if 
you're familiar with Street Fighter 2 terminology. You cannot not do this. Whenever you go for throw, he's always going to be kneeing his opponent in the head. Also, after the throw is over, he automatically backdashes. You can't control that. Okay? He automatically does that, he always does that backdash. Okay? If you mash buttons after you land the throw, you can mash buttons or spin the stick, you can get additional hits. Um, the most hits I've been able to get is 6. Also keep in mind, if your opponent mashes, uh, they can actually get out of it early. If nobody presses any buttons, then 4, uh, then four hits happens, but the opponent can mash out too and minimize it down to 2 hits, so it can go somewhere between 2 to 6 hits, or at least that's as far as I've experimented. Maybe you can do 1 and 7. Let's see how fast you can mash. <laughs> um, and so that's most of his stuff. Let's go into his combos. Let's say you get a universal guard break at max range. Uh, with Juzumaru, you actually have some decent options. Let's see, not guard clash on. Guard on. There we go. Even at the absolute tip range, you can still get a full super one. At the tip range, you can also get Fierce Rekkas or EX Rekkas. Now on the EX one, if you do the EX Rekka immediately, that actually misses at the very, very tip. So what you have to do is delay it ever so slightly. Notice that one missed. If you're at the very, very tip, you can land EX Rekka, but you have to delay it slightly, and then they fall into the hit. Um, and obviously if you're closer, you can get way more. Crouch Fierce, here we come. That's the workhorse. What about universal overhead combos? Everyone's got one. Um, what you can do is you can absolutely combo the light punch, light punch target after universal overhead. Come on. Come on. There it is. Come on. Okay, took a little bit of extra effort there, but you can do the, the double light punches. You can also go for crouching light punch if you feel that would be easier. But just keep in mind, if you do do crouching light punch, you're not going to have the same access to combos, because crouching light punch does not combo to light or to hard Rekka. So I recommend learning the timing for standing jab-jab, because then you can go straight into the Rekkas without spending any meter or anything else. Also, um, I discovered this recently, so Juzumaru and Hanzo are a little bit taller when they're crouching than the other characters. So if you hit them while they're crouching with your universal overhead, they have, they're not in hit stun for quite as long as the other characters. So against everybody that isn't Juzumaru or Hanzo, you can actually combo his close fierce here. But against another Juzumaru or against Hanzo, you won't be able to, so you'll just want to go for double jabs. The double jabs will work on everyone, and the close fierce will work on six out of the eight characters. And of course, because it starts up so fast, you could just raw super one if you felt like it for some pretty nice damage. Let's see. I mentioned that you can link this. That makes it a very, very useful three hit confirm if you have very nice timing, and again, you can also link Super 1 after the low fierce. So let's say you're playing footsies, they stick something out, boom! You can see it, visually confirm it, and go for Super 1. Um, I haven't talked about his crouching light kick much, and the reason is the timing on it, it's actually a link. This is not really a great chain. This requires some tight timing, actually, to actually combo the two light kicks. And just like with the light punches, you're not able to actually combo the meterless Rekkas. So you can use crouching light punches and kicks like this if you want, but you basically have to use EX Rekka if you want to combo out of them, which is why I don't recommend using them too much, but that is an option that you have. Um, what if you land a close fierce punch and get some big damage? Well, the basic thing that you can do is you can go into the dragon punch light punch, so the light shoulder like that, and then you can super cancel that for some nice damage, like so. Uh, again, Super 2 does a little bit more damage. Um, the other thing you could do if you land that close fierce 
is, remember when I said you could quarter circle back punch, hit the hard punch follow up and that will launch. So that gives you a couple of other options as well. You could go for a reset, followed by say one of these supers, or, let's see, you could also combo into the DP plus kick special move like so. And after that, you can go for that air reset. Notice that that one didn't turn red. That is just a straight up true combo. Oh, one. Missed my timing. That's a true combo too. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, so that gives you a couple of combo options. And let's see. If you do actually want to go for the low and link into that light punch, like that, pretty much all you can do is EX Reckless there. Oh, I'm terrible. Oh, God. Well, I started it. You saw it works. Hey, there we go. All right. All right, so last little bit of combo things. What about BL counter? What about it? All right. So he does not have a great PL, BL counter compared to some other characters. Um, if you actually BL counter someone out of the air, a really good candidate is standing hard kick for it. Um, he doesn't really have a whole lot of moves that continue juggles. So what you want to go for is go for the DP motion and hard punch for that little shoulder there. And then you can reset them into your super shenanigans. Like that. Or, if you actually be able to counter them and you're lucky enough to push them towards the corner, you can add a light shoulder after the fierce shoulder. Again, they have to be pushed to the corner. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. So, ultimately, like, I've done a lot of experimentation with this BL counter, and I'm not able to find many ways of continuing the juggle other than with the fierce shoulder. So, um, that's what you're going to want to go for. No matter where you are on screen, if you can go for fierce shoulder, that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you can just go for an air reset into super, or just a mix-up off of that air reset. Um, his BL counter damage is great, and I expect that this was intentional because he has very, very good ground-based damage and combo damage compared to some of the other characters. Um, but that's Juzumaru in a nutshell. He has some very interesting special moves that separate him from, say, other Rekka characters from other 2D fighters. So, just to summarize, Juzumaru's goal when you're playing him is to threaten with crouching hard punch in the footsie game. That's what you want, more than anything else. You want to get to this range here, and you want to threaten to counter poke all their crap with Crouch Spears. Because if this thing hits, you get ridiculous rewards. Not to mention, even if you don't have any meter, you can just sort of buffer Fierce Rekkas. And if they get hit by that, they're going to get blown up for some really big damage. You threaten with this, or the Hard Punch Rekka, in the footsie game at this range. If they block that Rekka, you can go for mix-ups. Um, by doing that delay thing I was talking about, or if it hits, you know, just keep going, push them to the corner. So Juzumaru is going to be good at cornering his opponent. You use Crouch Fierce, and you use Fierce Rekka for the, for the basic skeleton of your neutral game. But then you also have some interesting gimmicks with the quarter circle back punch stuff. Especially if you go for things like fakes, especially off of, say, Crouching Fierce Punch. You utilize his quarter circle back punch gimmicks, and his Crouching Hard Punch and Fierce Rekka, and that gives him his unique flavor of neutral game. And because both of his supers can be used in air reset situations, this gives him some excellent ability to do burst damage compared to the other characters as well. You combine these options with a basic close range mix-up, and that's how you get the most out of Juzumaru. And that's your goal. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm almost done, three characters to go. Um, I hope you will be able to watch those videos as well. I'm going to upload this to YouTube as soon as possible. Um, I will see you guys later.